everyone, my name is Melissa. I want to go over this question that was raised on the Enterprise DNA forum. Now this member wanted to turn a calendar layout back into a proper tabular format. Now that involved a bit more than just the basic transformations. So let's take a look at the data. And I think we all recognize this type of layout where uh, the days are set out horizontally and then the weeks are set out vertically. Okay, so turning this into a proper uh, tabular format will mean that we'll have to end up with uh, a column for the dates, a column for the movements and a column for the names. Okay, so let's go over the Power Query. Now before we get started, if the formula bar is not visible on your screen, please go to the View tab and toggle it on. Okay. So when I examined this, this data in Excel, there were a couple of things that I noticed uh, pretty quickly. So the first thing I saw was that those top two rows, we don't need them. So on the Home tab, go to Remove Rows, Remove Top Rows. Enter two and press OK. And we also don't need column one, so we can remove that as well. So on the Home tab again, choose columns, deselect column one, and press OK. Now I also noticed that there were a couple of blank rows. So uh, these records, records 16 uh, to 14, they're completely filled with null values. So as you can see, moving off to the side, only nulls. So we can remove those completely blank records. So remove rows and remove blank rows. Done. Okay. Now the next issue that I saw was that these date values kind of skip a column every every time. So not only in the top row of course but at all these places. They're always skipping a column and we somehow have to fill these gaps. So to do that, we're going to flip this table on its side and see if we can sort that. So on the Transform tab, we'll go to Transpose. Excellent. So now we have uh, all those date values in a singular column. And we can select all those columns containing dates. So pressing down Control, I'm going to select column 8. Moving off to the side. I'm also going to select column number 14 and column number 21. And that's all of them, I believe. Yep, that's all of them. Perfect. Now to fill those gaps, we're just going to fill down that date value. So right clicking in the column header, select fill, fill down. Okay. Now when you look at the data that we have here, it's kind of already in a pretty decent shape. I mean, if you think of uh, column one through column seven as a separate table, and then column eight through column 13 as a separate table and so on, if you had those um, separated, you could just append them all together and perform a basic unpivot uh, operation to get back to that tabular format. The thing is, because they are all these tables are adjacent to one another, we can't actually do that. So we have to break this table apart and stitch them back together into smaller tables. So to do that, we're going to enter our first formula here inside the formula bar. So we're manually going to enter a step. So I'm going to press FX. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the table dot to columns operation. So table dot to columns. And here it says that a table dot to columns, it creates a list of nested list for each of the column values of the table. So each column will be uh, turned into a list and I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I'm going to press enter. 
So we now have a list object here and this list only contains other list values as you can see. Now when I click off to the, to the side here in the white space down below we can see a preview and let me make that a bit bigger so you'll see that the first list is all the values from column 1 and the second list column 2 and so on. So we know how to separate those tables. We know we have to find the list that contains the dates because when we, when we encounter a list that contains date, we know, dates, we know we have another table. We have the first column of a new table. So um, to identify those lists, we're going to have to transform this list back into a table and perform some other operations. So turning it into a table first and next we're going to add an index column. So add an index column. I'm going to add an index number uh, column from zero. Doesn't really matter if you add it from one as long as there is an index column present here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to update that index value. So we're going to create another column here in a minute and um, what we're going to do is we're going to check if this list contains a date and if it does contain a date we're going to return that index value here so for uh, record number one we're going to return a zero now because list number two does not contain dates we're not going to return any value here and that's how we're going to work through each of these lists so we're going to add a custom column and because we're going to update our index value I'm going to call this index2 okay now first off we're going to perform that logical test a test so we're going to say if and then we're going to have to check at the list in column number one. So I'm going to reference column number one here and we're going to have to extract a value from that list to be able to check if that is a date or not. Now the access operator uh, for, um, for that is those curly brackets. So Power Query is zero based. So adding a zero between those curly brackets will mean that I get the first value from that list that's what we're going to do here. And then I'm going to check is is that a date? Now if it is then I want to return the index number and if it's not I don't want to return any value at all. So it said we didn't make any errors here so I'm going to press OK and this is looking good. So we know our first list contains dates and it returned a zero and it also for record eight returned the index number. So let's check and that also contains the dates. So that is looking pretty good. Now we need to be able to um, get all these lists and group them back together into a table. So that means we have to have the same index number here. So we're going to fill that down. So I'm going to right click the index column and select fill, fill down. So each, uh, uh, let, let's call it future table, now has the same index number here. So we can identify those lists that belong to a single table. So everything with index to uh, value zero that should be turned into a single table and everything with the index to value number seven that should be turned into another table. Okay, and how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use the group by operation. Now, I don't want to uh, enter the entire syntax here. So I'm going to select it here from uh, the ribbon and then we're going to update it inside the formula bar. 
because there is no way to uh, to perform the transformation that we need from inside um, this uh, the screen. So just performing a basic group by, by the index number two, that's what we want because that's our, in, uh, our updated index and it's standard going to uh, perform a count operation, now that's fine. So we're going to press OK and we'll see that we now have just four records here with a count column and now and this is what we're going to update. So it's grouped by index number two. It's created a column called count and that column performed the operation table.rowCount. Now we didn't actually want to count the rows from that table. What we do want is we want to create um, a new table from columns. So table dot from columns and we're going to reference the column that contained our list values. So that was the column called column one. And I'm going to step back um, in a minute to show you. So we're going to reference column one. Now this no longer is going to return the type number, of course, this is going to return a type table. And I'm going to press enter. And it did give us a table object so that it does look promising. Now let's check because I referenced column one here. So let's step back to uh, the fill down step here. And we can see that our lists are placed inside column number one. So that should have done the trick. So stepping back, uh, what we did was uh, we checked every um, every record with the index uh, to value zero. That's what this does. And then we retrieved the list value from column one. And finally, we stitched those lists back together into a single table. And then we return the table. So that's what this M code is doing. Now let's check that. So um, in the count column here, I'm going to click off to the side here in the white space. Great. So let's check the next one. This is looking good. Perfect. So we basically uh, transformed our, and let me step back to our transpose step or our fill down step here. So basically what we did is we uh, grabbed those first seven uh, columns and stitched them into one table. And then we got the next columns and stitch that back into a table as well. All inside this nested table function. Now to uh, append them back together, what we need to do is enter another step in our formula bar. So we're manually en en entering another step by pressing FX here. And what we're going to do is we're going to table.combine. Okay. Now here it says that table.combine, it takes a list of table tables and it returns that by merging them together. So um, what we're going to do is, let me step off to the side. So a column is based, a single column is basically a list. So if we reference the column count, we have a list of tables and table.combine uh, combines those that list of tables back into a proper column, uh, a proper table. So let's access that, let's reference that account column, add a closing parentheses, and press enter. Amazing stuff. So we now have a giant table where all those um, nested tables are appended back into one single big table right here. So all we need to do now is just some uh, just 
well, a couple of last steps. So I'm going to select column one and two. So pressing down either shift or control, that doesn't matter. They're, the, the columns are adjacent. So on the transform step, I'm going to select unpivot other columns. Now we don't need this attribute uh, column. So I'm going to deselect that here. And finally, just give it a proper name. So this is a date column. This is a movements column. And this is a name column. Of course, we have to set the correct type. So this is a date and this is a type text. All done. Perfect. Well, First, thanks for posting this question on the forum. I know I learned a lot working through this, so uh, and I'm, I'm confident others will benefit from this as well in the future. So thanks for that and all the best.